It is almost Thanksgiving, so I thought it would be appropriate for us to read a book about Thanksgiving. It's called Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving, and this story is um, by Dave Pilkey. He also did all of the illustrations, and this is the same author as Captain Underpants, so you might be familiar with his work with Captain Underpants. Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving. I love this. It's got a quote at the beginning. A lot of times we have a dedication, but this is a quote. So this is words that were spoken from Vincent Van Gogh. And what is done with love is well done. Hmm. I like that. If it's done with love, it's well done. So Vincent Van Gogh said that. Um, do you know who he is? We're going to see if we can make some connections to who he um, was and uh, maybe why Dave Pilkey quoted him at the beginning here. So let's first enjoy the story. Make sure you can see it okay. All right. Twas the day before Thanksgiving and all through the trees, the fall leaves were spinning aloft in the breeze. Eight children had boarded their school bus with grins in hopes that a field trip soon would begin. It's kind of how it looks here, doesn't it? With our fall, our fall trees, you can see the trees are losing their leaves. It's windy. These kids are going on a field trip. Oh, I love field trips. They're so fun. They sang as they rode through autumn terrains while visions of drumsticks danced in their brains. Yeah, <laughs> I know drumsticks are some people's favorite Thanksgiving foods. Do you have a favorite Thanksgiving food? It's so funny. All the favorites that a lot of people have are not things that I like to eat. <laughs> um, so I like kind of weird things for Thanksgiving, but I do love stuffing. My dad makes homemade stuffing, and that's one of my favorite foods that I've had my whole life. So that's cool. But most of the other foods, uh, <laughs> but those kids have drumsticks dancing in their brains. O'er rivers through woods with winding and weaves, their school bus sailed on through the new fallen leaves. When out on the road there arose such a clatter, they threw down a they threw down their windows to see what was the matter. Look at that. They are zooming along. This is turkey farm. When what with their wondering eyes should they see but a miniature farm and eight tiny turkey. A little old man so lively and rugged, they knew in a moment it was Farmer Mac Nugget. <laughs> so they're at the turkey farm. He was dressed all in denim from his head to his toe with a pinch of polyester and a dash of Velcro. And then in a twinkling, they heard in the straw, the prancing and pawing of each little claw. More rapid than chickens, his cockerels they came. He whistled and shouted and called them by name. Are you noticing any connections to this story from another one you might know? Maybe you're familiar with Was the Night Before Christmas? And uh, Santa calls out the reindeer's names. Maybe you don't know that one yet. I don't know, but um, there's a lot of similarities here. The way it's the way it's written and the way I read it, kind of with that rhyming pattern. <laughs> now Ollie, now Stanley, now Larry and Mo, on Wally, on Beaver, on Shemp and Groucho. Your parents might know who some of those are. Larry and Mel were part of the Three Stooges. Wally and Beaver was um, oh, were on a show, a TV show, Groucho. These are all some famous names here. Okay. The turkeys were chunky with smiley beaked faces, and they greeted the children with downy embraces. Look at how they greeted the kids. Gave them all hugs. Aw, that's so cute. So out through the barnyard, they ran and they flew, 
And they gobbled and giggled. They gobbled and giggled as friends sometimes do. Oh, it looks like they're having a blast. I don't think I've ever been to a turkey farm. I wonder if that's what it's really like. I've never had a turkey hug me either, so I'm pretty sure that's probably not what it's quite like. Ooh, this picture looks familiar. I don't know if you've ever seen this. Then somebody spotted an ax by the door and she asked Farmer Nugget what it was for. With the blink of his eye and a twist of his head, the old for farmer told a grim tale of dread. Do you know what the ax is for? At a turkey farm? You do know? Tonight, said Mac Nugget. Those feathery beasts will be chopped up and roasted for Thanksgiving feasts. The children stood still as tears filled their eyes. Then they clamored aloud in a chorus of cries. <laughs> Why are they crying? What did they figure out? Yeah, they figured out McNugget's going to kill those turkeys, and uh, that's what they're for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, by the way, those are fake cries. I was reading and being dramatic. Oh, dear, cried McNugget. Now what shall I do? So he dashed to the well, and the teacher went too. And they fetched some water fresh from the ground in hopes that a swig might calm everyone down. Yeah, sometimes when I need to calm down, I get a drink of water, take a walk. They're trying to figure out what they can do to help make these kids not so upset that the turkeys are going to be killed for Thanksgiving dinner. Um, because you guys saw them. They were all playing. <laughs> it was super fun. And then when they returned to quiet the matter, the children were calmer and mysteriously fatter. The boys and girls drank up their drinks in the hay and thanked old Mac Nugget and waddled away. Why are those kids so fat? What happened to those kids? <laughs> Can you see? They limped to the school bus and huffing and puffing. It's not easy to walk with hot turkey stuffing. Wait a minute, they put those turkeys in their shirts? Oh, that's what they did. Oh my gosh, those kids are hiding all the turkeys and they're putting them on the bus. Oh my gosh, see that? They're putting them on the bus. By the way, do you notice this? Have you ever seen this before, this background? Does it look familiar to you? And then as the school bus drove off in the night, McNugget looked round. Not a turkey in sight. Look, he's super confused. Where are the turkeys? Where did they go? Twas the night before Thanksgiving and the stars up above shone down on a school bus abounding with love. Here's that, those kind of swirly sky. Do you recognize that? Have you ever seen that before? The very next evening, eight families were blessed with eight fluffy Thanksgiving turkeys as guests. They feasted on veggies with jelly and toast and everyone was thankful the turkeys were most. So they had the Thanksgiving turkeys as guests, not the food. Look at, I love looking at each one of those pictures and you can see the turkey in there and it's sitting at the Thanksgiving, at the, at the table for Thanksgiving with the families. And they're um, a guest there. It's kind of funny. So each one gave thanks for love and for living. And they all had a wonderful, happy Thanksgiving. And that is the end of the story. But we are going to go ahead and talk about... Um, some of the other connections within this story, um, because there's a lot to this story other than just the, the kind of silly rhyme. There's a lot of connections that we can make, too. So um, I hope you did enjoy the story. And now we're going to go ahead and look at 
some of those connections. Dave Pilkey wrote Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving, um, and he wrote many other books that you might be familiar with. You can check out his website to see all of the books that he's written if you're interested in reading more of his works. Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving was actually inspired by another famous poem called A Visit from St. Nicholas, and it was written by Clement Clark Moore. He lived from 1779 to 1863. Now, uh, maybe you are, maybe you are not familiar with this poem, but I'm just going to read the beginning of it and see if you can hear how it's so very similar to what Dave Pilkey wrote. "'Twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there." I'm going to read the beginning of uh, "'Twas the night before Thanksgiving." "'Twas the day before Thanksgiving and all through the trees the fall leaves were spinning aloft in the breeze." Eight children had boarded their school bus with grins and hoped that a field trip soon would begin. So that's one connection that I have to this book that Dave Pilkey um, was inspired by a visit from St. Nicholas when he wrote this book. Another connection I made to this book was the very beginning. It says, and what is done with love is well done. And Vincent Van Gogh said this. This is a self-portrait that Vincent van Gogh painted. Vincent van Gogh was a Dutch painter. That means he was from the Netherlands. He lived from 1853 to 1890. Um, he is one of the most famous and influential figures in the history of Western art. So in over 10 years, he created 2,100 artworks, including about 860 oil paintings. One of the most famous facts about Vincent van Gogh was he cut off his own ear. Um, he cut off his left ear when tempers flared with an artist whom he had been working with. What's the connection between van Gogh and this Thanksgiving book besides the quote at the very beginning? It's this very famous piece of art by van Gogh called Starry Night that he created in 1889. When you look at this illustration that Dave Pilkey created next to Starry Night, can you see those connections? There is one other reference in this book that I would like to point out to you, and that is another famous painting. This famous painting is called American Gothic, and it was painted in 1930 by Grant Wood. Have you ever seen this before? I noticed as I was reading this Thanksgiving book um, how the illustration on this page looks so much like American Gothic. So I have to share that with you as well. Can you see the connection too? There are other connections to famous people and famous works of art. In this book, Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving. Did you find some that I didn't talk about? I wonder if Dave Pilkey decided to hide images and references to things he was thankful for in this story, Twas the Night Before Thanksgiving. Hmm, what do you think? I do hope that you enjoyed this story, and I am certainly thankful for you. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Take care. Peace.